Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Consulting Engineers South Africa have offered to inject private engineering skills into departments and municipalities to help boost their ability to plan and deliver much needed infrastructure. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the feasibility of the plan. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the background to the skills injection proposal? Well I think the main background is you know there's been a, a big decline in the investment into the economy and particularly investment into infrastructure. And we see this in, you know, all around us in the lack of good services, the good roads. Uh, we see service delivery protests. And uh, there's also this view that the capability of municipalities and departments that procure infrastructure has been undermined and in some cases absolutely decimated over the last number of years. Some of it linked to state capture, some of it linked to other corrupt activities. But there's a, a real problem in the state and its capacity. And in fact, when uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa met with business at the Business Economic in Darbo in early January, he said that when he looked at his list of top priorities uh, from the State of the Nation of 2019, the June State of the Nation, he realized that he had put a capable state and an ethical state in that list, but he said it actually needs to come right to the top, along with things like job creation, economic transformation, education. So it, it's a realization in government that without having uh, people that are capable to do um, the work that is necessary, especially in these very technical areas, finance and engineering, uh, it, it is going to be a constraint on service delivery, and also you don't get value for money. And then we saw the ANC statement uh, recently coming out that there's going to be a every effort to ensure that the positions are filled not in the traditional cadre deployment parachuting in uh, cadres into certain areas but making sure that those people that are deployed have the skills and the capabilities to do their work. So that's really the background but it's also in a context of a lack of project uh, pipeline. Uh, we've seen the construction industry in South Africa and the major pressure. In fact Dec decimated as well, number of companies in, uh, in business rescue. Uh, and then it's upstream of that is where these consulting engineers uh, pos are positioned. Uh, the, the consulting engineer in South Africa, which is making the proposal to inject private skills. There too, the capacity utilization rates are at about 80%. So <coughs> the, the view is from the president of CISA, Sugan Pillay, that you know, there's one in five engineers are not properly, fully engaged in, uh, in sort of productive activities. And those, uh, that resource, that surplus, should be used potentially to inject into the, uh, into the state. Can this proposal be implemented without breaching public procurement rules? I think that's a big question. You know, that I think all decision making in government now has to follow the Public Finance Management Act, the Municipal Finance Management Act. There's very clear um, competitive bidding, uh, fair tender processing that has to uh, precede any procurement of skills, like engineering skills even, even professional engineering skills. And the view is that this can be implement, implemented maybe in two ways. The immediate implementation would be a secondment type, a voluntary service uh, where the, um, these professional engineers go into municipalities, into engineering departments, in, in government departments, in infrastructure departments, and helps at least uh, lay the basis for master planning, for instance, or even to set the parameters for a tender that goes out from these departments uh, that uh, to employ what they call an owner's engineer. So the engineer that will sit on the side of the client, in this case the client being a municipality or government department, that has the skills and capability not only to plan um, what goes out into the market in terms of what services you're looking to procure in terms of professional services, but has a view of what should be, should be procured and, and is, a, is a able to create master plans and project pipelines and bankable projects. So that, would, that process, that second step process, that owner's engineer process, would be definitely done on a competitive bidding uh, basis and therefore shouldn't breach any of government's procurement rules. But I think it is a question, how do we inject this? It's something that uh, could be injected quite quickly, but we have to do it in a way that we don't have more fruitless and wasteful expenditure when the Auditor General comes around for the, for the, 
the audit of the 2020-2021 uh, fiscal year. What else is CISA saying should be done to get infrastructure investment moving again? Well, we need a we need a project pipeline and we need bankable projects. This has always been a problem. Uh, we've got ideas and aspirations, but to get uh, uh, projects built, you, a lot of upfront work has to be done, not just the engineering, but the financial engineering. How do you pay for these services that you're wanting to deliver, whether it be an economic service, like a, a road or an airport or a railway uh, line, or a social service like a school, a clinic, a hospital. And uh, you need to have the, the sort of technical wherewithal to design these in a way that is, is uh, most cost effective, but then to make sure that you have a funding model that backs that whether that funding model is relied on subsidies or direct transfers from the fiscus, or whether there's a user pay model. And uh, so, so that's what we really lack, uh, uh, a pipeline of bankable infrastructure. But there are instances in South Africa already where we've had very successful procurement processes. And one of those is the Renewable Energy Independent Power Producer Procurement Program. And CISA says in the current context where the lights are going off, there's no doubt that that program should be uh, resuscitated. We haven't had a bidding round since around 2015 when we had the so-called expedited round for renewable projects, which were never, or ironically, expedited but never procured, or actually procured but never financially closed. So we had a list of projects because Eskom refused to uh, sign power purchase agreements for those projects. Obviously, that's an obvious one that worked. It's successful. Obviously, there, there's a way to tweak them in the interest of uh, maybe current government needs, but let's get that going at least, and uh, s that was the one. And then there's also the Sanral concessions that were successful in the past, which they would like to see resuscitated. Uh, and then in the world, there's build, operate, and transfer, build, operate, train and transfer, design, build, operate, and transfer. These models are wa quite well known are well known to South African professional engineers, are well known to the sort of uh, contractor and uh, investment community. And uh, given the fiscal constraints, we're going to be relying more and more on public-private partnerships to deliver uh, social and economic infrastructure. And therefore, we should uh, lean on those models. So there were some practical, immediate uh, practical uh, suggestion of inject these skills into the public sector because there's this this imbalance between the skills sitting in the private sector but not enough work and uh, the work not coming out of the public sector because there's no skills to generate the project pipeline. That's an immediate practical solution. It'll be interesting to see how government responds to that, uh, how labor responds to that. And we will, then there's these other sort of quick wins, get the IPP program moving again, whether it's for conventional or renewable energy and then also some of the transport projects that there's, he's already baked, they've tried and tested, let's get them going again. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.